And so how do you define right. good? Well, good and bad are like both man-made concepts. Like, so like what we conceive as good, like somebody else like might not perceive as good. You know? Which is why that it's Whoa. <laughs> so that, that we can't be the ones to determine. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. They were pulling deep. Now they Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Uh. What's up, everybody? It's Kevin Wilson, the host and creator of A Christian Podcast with Kevin Wilson. I'm super excited for you guys to be able to finally hear season three. This is by far my favorite season, not just because it's the most recent, but because of how different it is. In this season, we go out a lot. Like I literally would go to Freedom Park in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I would just talk to people. Like I, I would have a sign. It started off with this little white cardboard sign with Sharpie written on it. And eventually I got a nicer one. But in the first episodes, it's literally just this raggedy sign, hand drawn that says, do you believe in God? And um, through it, I was able to talk to so many people, atheists, Hindu, uh, Buddhist, uh, agnostic, like just so many different religions, races, and types of people. And it was an amazing thing. And so as great as this process has been, it's also been a learning experience for me. Like there are so many times when I've been watching these episodes, you know, editing them and everything. And I'm like, ah, you could have said that, or you should have inserted that scripture or articulated that point a little differently or better. Um, but like I said, it's a learning process. And I hope that you can grow and learn from some of my mistakes or maybe not even mistakes, but maybe just areas or points where I could have done or said something better. And so there are going to be a few times throughout the episode where I'll kind of interject through video and say, hey, maybe I should have said it this way. This would have probably been a better way to say that phrase or whatever the case may be. And I hope you guys can learn from it and that you are encouraged to go out and spread the gospel yourself. It doesn't have to be through a podcast or at a park or anything like that. But in your own way, we are all called to be ambassadors of Christ. And yeah, I'm just really excited for you guys to be able to experience this season. But last thing before I go, if you'd like to support the podcast, head to patreon.com forward slash Kevin Wilson or click one of the links in the show notes or the description to give a one time payment. Now, I hope that you enjoy this episode. All right. So in this episode, I'm actually outside. If you hear a lot of background noise, excuse that. I'm actually with my little brother. What's what going up, on, man? people? Tell Justin people Wilson. Uh, tell them your Instagram and your... You got a podcast out right now. It's Not out, be out, but it's going to be out. What's it called? It is called Just 10 Minutes. It's a podcast about different topics and advices. It's basically like an advice column, like a life column podcast. Um, 10 minute segments. Um, that's why it's called Just 10 Minutes. You know. Smooth. You know. That's kind of... I, I kind of yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Just 10 Minutes. All right. So, like I said, we're outside. We're at Freedom Park. And um, we literally just have a sign out saying, do you believe in God? And we're just willing to talk to people about God. I actually, what's crazy is that I'm, I'm kind of mad that I didn't record it is I talked to a dude out here, um, TJ, for like 20 minutes. And we literally had what I wanted to have on this conversation. But we was in the middle of setting up. And so um, I didn't get to actually talk to him or talk to him on the podcast. But. It was great. It was, it was a great a really starter. Good conversation. Um, he was agnostic, and yeah, he was just like, I don't really know. For people that don't don't know what agnostic is, it's that you believe there is a God, but you don't know who He is. You don't really you don't decide to worship Him. Um, it's different than atheists. Atheists is just they do not believe in any God or any deity of any sort. Agnostic is kind of like on the fence. Like I don't know. I I believe, but I don't fully know. Um, and then theist is uh, a believer, anybody that believes in any God of any sort. So, yeah, man. So I wanted to talk about, um, it's really crazy how much his conversation went into what we were going to talk about, which I didn't even tell my brother. But um, I want to talk about our belief mm -hmm. in God. And it's like, why do we believe? Mm. Because that's a hard question to answer. You would think, like, as a Christian... You should know. You should be able to articulate. Mm -hmm. Why do I believe in God? But that's a hard question to wrestle with. Yeah, I don't want to say hard, but it, it requires some yeah. deep thought. Mm -hmm. um, and so we both grew up in the same household. 
Christian parents. Yeah. Grew up in the faith, mm -hmm. raised around it. Um, and so I'm easily distracted, y'all. So y'all bear with me. And th these people are not being very respectful that we're right here. But um, I'm going to try to stay on track. Same household, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Parents grew us up. You know, the Bible says train up a child in the way they should go and they should not depart from it. And, I mean, we're examples of that. Mm -hmm. One of the questions I wrestle with, though, is would I have come to faith? Would I have come to believe in Jesus Christ? If it wasn't for the upbringing? Had I grown up in a different upbringing? Yeah, you could put the, you could put the mic closer to you. Yep. Yeah. That, that's a tough question because... I guess I would say I'm biased as someone brought up in a Christian household. Yeah. Um, so it's easy to say, well, yeah, of course I would, because I, I know the faith for myself now. Um, and I was brought up in a, in a Christian household. So it's easy to just be like, yeah, of course I would have. But it's like, how do you how can you confirm that? Because um, if I were to say I were born Muslim. Yeah. The way that a Muslim family would upbring their Muslim children would be just as strong as my Christian parents brought me up Christian. Yeah. So why would I then say as a Muslim, oh no, Christian is the way of life because but my parents taught me Muslim ideologies. Yeah. So why would I then be like, no, nah, I'm just going to depart from that and Christianity is the way. And that's a question that I I probably haven't even really asked myself that. It's like, would I? Yeah. You know? And it's like It's crazy. I mean, it's so crazy because there's no way you would ever know. It, we would love to think, all the believers would love to think that, oh, yeah, if I, even if I didn't grow up a Christian, I would somehow end up believing in God. But it's like we have no way to prove that. There's no way. There goes TJ, the dude that we just talked to. Um, like, there's no way to prove that at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so with that, it's like, man, it almost gets you to the this thing, uh, this idea of election, which is that the belief that there is an elect set of people that God has chosen um, as, you know, believers. That yeah. Are, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Um, which that almost gets into predestination, mm -hmm. which I don't even want to go down that rabbit trail. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, that rabbit trail. But um, I think about that often. Yeah. It's just like, man. What would I have believed? Like, if I grew up in an atheist household, if I grew up, like you said, a Muslim or whatever, how, or maybe not even would I have, but, like, what would have been the path? Like, how would I have come to faith? Mm. What would have been the 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 route, the journey? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, I guess the hope would be that there would then be people that are as we are now that are doing the things like what we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, for me, I have a lot of friends that are agnostic um, or even follow the Christian belief, but aren't as um, strict as you would say in your faith. Um, when you say that, do you mean that they don't necessarily follow the teachings of Jesus? Of, of of Christ? Jesus right. right. They don't live as if you right. know, as Christ would. Um, to that, it's like I feel like there would have there would have to be people like us that that would tell our friends of the things that we follow and the things that we believe um otherwise it's like what what would be the thing that would cause me to to go from what i believed in um yeah. and i'm the kind of person that i'm not very shy about my faith so even if it's people that don't believe or don't want to believe um or don't even know how to believe yeah. i know i have to do my job as a christian to to push that, to push that narrative of, of living like Christ um, to everyone, because I do understand that question right there of like, well, there are people that did not grow up in a yeah. Christian household. So there are people that genuinely don't know. You do. Right. Talking about me, I do. But there are people that don't and don't know anything. So it's like, how are you yourself going to guide that? I don't yeah. even know if that answered it, to be quite no, honest I mean, with you. I mean, it got me to a good point, which is... Which is getting really into you, you. You're getting into my other episodes, bro. Uh, of like evangelism, yeah. Which is really why why it's, it's necessary for us to spread the gospel because there are people that were not raised in Christian households. There are people that have not, for whatever reason, found Christ yet at this point. Mm -hmm. And it's like 
that's our job. Mm-hmm. That's why we're the hands and feet of Jesus. Yeah, I'm looking at these people that look like they want to be on here. I'm gonna yeah. ask them. Um, but you know what I'm saying? That's our job. Yeah. Do y'all want to be on this podcast? I saw. I was just saying. <laughs> I, I saw sure y'all did. from all the way <laughs> down. What's your names? What's up? Y'all can come on each side. And say your name again. China. China. Oh, let me make sure your mic up. Say something again. Hello. Oh, hold on. Try again. One more time. Hello, hello. All right, there we go. And say something for me, bro. Yo, yo. All right, cool. But so we are talking about do you believe in God? Matter of fact, let me take these off because y'all good. Um, do you believe in God? Most definitely. You believe in God? For sure. Are y'all Christians? Yes. So what has caused you to become Christian? You want me to share my testimony? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I didn't grow up in the church or anything like that. Um, I'll just kind of make this short. I'll say 2020. um, I was searching for healing, went through like this weird relationship, really abusive. And um, I started dabbling into new age spirituality. So all those crystals and meditation, you know, like just things of that nature, you know, trying to like heal myself through like crystals and chakras, just because that was like really a thing on TikTok and stuff like that. And you know, it was appealing to me. And of course, there's like some truth in everything, but I knew like that wasn't the whole truth. And um, I used to do like a lot of drugs, like, I don't know, smoking weed heavily, like in high school and stuff like that, like taking like Xanax. And really 2020, I started experimenting with like psychedelics. Like I was doing like acid and stuff like that. And then I dabbled into the shrooms and stuff. And I mean, at the time, I really thought, like, I was having fun, but at the end of the day, like, I would go home, and, like, there was still, like, this weird, like, feeling, a heavy, like, feeling, you know, like, that I really don't know the answer truly, like, what is this that I'm even doing, just really questioning, like, everything in life, you know? Yeah. And um, I was just in a really bad depression, and it was this one day that I'm with my friend, and she's also a Christian, and I... I mean, like, she's been my best friend for, like, some years now, and uh, we're having a conversation, and... Like I'm just telling her what I'm going through. I'm I'm tripping and I'm just like, friend, like, like I'm just in a bad space. Like and I'm just venting to her and um, I can't. I, to be honest, I don't remember exactly what she said, but the only thing I heard her say was God. And I'm like, yo, like I've been praying to the universe. Like I've been trying to manifest. I've been trying to journal. I've been trying to do all this stuff. Oh, man. And I forgot about God. I forgot I have a father. I forgot I have a creator. What's going on with you? And I'm like, friend can I go to church with you? And she said, yeah, of course. I didn't end up going to church with her mm. that day. But I sat down on my floor when I woke up that morning and I looked to my left and I had a kid's study Bible that my mom got me like when I was like way younger that I never even opened up. And uh, I opened that thing up. I started in Genesis and I'm like, I did not know that the Bible was like this. I'm like, what's this about? <laughs> like, hold up. Then yeah. every morning I'm reading for an hour, hour and a half, just like really just trying to soak in all this information because like uh, we have such a wonderful creator that wants us to yeah. know about him, you know, and I w- I'm just, I'm grateful. Wow. So that's my testimony, y'all. That's good. That's, that's dope. That's good. Dang. Like, that's so, so you are, so you are really deep into like new age stuff. Do you, I want to talk about that because I kind of talked about that to this one guy earlier. And that's like, did you actually receive any of what you were looking for through that? Or like at the time, were you at least convinced that, oh, this stuff is actually helping me. These drugs are actually helping me. This meditation, these rocks, or, well, I don't know what you were into, Careful. crystals and stuff. Like, did, did you actually, were you actually convinced that this stuff was helping you? I mean, yes, I was convinced. And that's why I just like kept going, you know. And But the truth is, I spent like a lot of time outside you know, just like trying to be present and just be connected with nature. And I feel like maybe that's why I had all those like results that I was looking for. But at the end of the day, it wasn't like a true like, yeah, it wasn't true. You know, like there was still something missing, of course. But it was because I was outside and stuff like that. Just. But yeah, yeah Man, y'all. That's, I appreciate you sharing it. That's, yeah. a, that's a dope testimony because a lot of a lot of people don't realize they dabble in that stuff and don't realize like 
that is not of God. It's not. It's actually. I mean, it's, it's really demonic. If we get into it, but mm -hmm. I don't want to go down too far into that. But totally. it's, it's really, you know, it's really other enemy, and it's disguised as like a really Light, nice. You know? you know, what I'm saying like, yes. oh, this is helping me. But I appreciate you for sharing that. Dope. And then remind me of your name again. Kato. Kato. Okay. For sure. Talk, talk about why you believe in, in God. How you come to to know Christ. So I was, I'd say from just a jit, you know what I'm saying, family-wise, I was put in there. I was even in the choir, and it was one of those things where I had to realize, so pretty much it's one of those things, you can be placed there, but you really got to accept and receive it yourself, you know? Yeah. So being a child, you know how our parents make us do so many things that we just follow through with because, you know, they tell us to, though we don't naturally have that foundation and grip for it ourselves. Yeah. So it started off like that, you know, and then... um Really, I, I, when I was a child, I would really, I say my prayer life was strong to where I would just pray for the world, you know what I'm saying? And what I realized was I would pray for the world, and then at the same time, it was the world that was distracting me, distracting me and pulling me from my faith, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So it was one of those things where, um, even like she said, the new age and stuff, I was at a point where I understand history. And even it's one of those things where, you know, it gets I say it gets complicated because when they tell you, you know, what I'm saying you come off a slave ship and they put this Bible in your hand, you know, what I'm saying just a long story short. And I was thinking, well, at first I got pulled away because I was like, yo, this this is whitewashed. So with that being said, it just it was a big journey to where I had to see and go through even where I was searching for truth. And I was feeling like it was only a part truth. Mm -hmm. You know how you were saying, like, as far as the spiritual stuff, it was like I did go through that. I joined the army and uh, what's up, G's? Everything. Um, so I was in there and that's when my my relationship with the most High got stronger because I was out in the field, separated from my family, friends, surrounded by strangers, no phone. And I really just started writing a lot. And at the same time, I was still, I'd say, gaining outside knowledge because I was more so searching for truth. Right. And the thing is, when you're searching for something that you really don't have a basis on, it leads you to those other paths. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, because sure. then it's like, especially when you got them telling you that Jesus is a, a Caucasian man, you know what I'm yeah, saying? It's yeah, like, yeah. okay, this don't look like me, so how could it be me? Yeah. So, and especially when you have things where you hear from like the Egyptians or whatever, because it's it's like, okay, they're my color. And then they show with the ankh and the cross, just the similarities and things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it was yeah. like that. And though what happened was, when I was out there, I remember this specific time where uh, we were at the shooting range and we had to shoot. We had to shoot in a certain amount to qualify. The first time I didn't even get it. I got like half. And right then I was like, I just broke down, started praying, man. Right. And right then it was like, yo, after I prayed, I went back up, bro. I shot more than what I needed. And that really just opened my faith. And it was like, OK, then with that, it was even a longer story to where I get back here. And as y'all were saying with the crystals and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because those are even in the Bible, yeah. whereas like you got the breastplate, you know what I'm saying, with the different different crystals. And it was like it's, it's one of those things where started like it was like you can get two things. And like she said, it's a, there's truth and even lies, you know what I'm saying, to where they put it together. And it's like, oh, we perceive it as like, OK, it's OK, but it's not OK. Right, right. So I really just got to the point where, like I said, I was looking for truth. Otherwise, feeling like it was whitewashed, even just like the true name of the Most High, where it was like, OK, I started looking. It took me, I'd say, more of, I ain't going to say a Hebrew Israelite path, but just wanted to get the specific name as far as Yahweh Yeshua, yeah. wanted to get to the roots of things, bro. That's all I've ever wanted. Because like I said, as a child, my mother, she would always hit me with the because I said so. And it's like, I'm always just wanting to answer. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? And yeah, so even with the because I said so, it put man. me in a mindset where it's like, okay, you ain't going to tell me. I'm going to go around and have to find it for myself. Yeah. So it just really became yeah. one of those journeys. And then, bro, it just it hit when, as she, as she was saying, like, it's just the Yahweh, the, the most high. He just kept putting me in situations to see it was nobody but him. Yeah, and it's yeah. like all that other stuff is, you know what I'm saying? Like you can put your energy yeah, into it. You yeah. can believe all you want. But at the end of the day, it's always going to come back to the most high. Mm -hmm. So that's where my journey has been, bro. And it's it's been one of those things where, you know, it's, it is the, it's the, it's the narrow path, you know? Yeah. And so, man, that's, that dude, I can't even see him no more, but he's riding a skateboard. You'll see him coming out. He got a blue, blue Superman shirt. I was on. just talking to him about like, he was like, you know, like, how do you know? How do you, you know, how can you believe that guy right there? Okay, I see. Um, and I was saying like, you have to test him, like, and that's what you did really when you when you were in the military and you you shot and you didn't do well, you prayed, and then you did better, and so that was your test of like God help me, like, mm -hmm. and I told him like, test God, like he, he's a good father, he's gonna want to show you that he's real, like what good father would be like, their son comes up to them is like, God show me that you're real, show me. Or father, show me that you care about me, and they don't. 
Like, mm-hmm. God's going to want to do that. And so I also want to talk about a little bit, um, I'm going to let y'all go. I don't want to hold y'all too long. But you talked about the whole whitewash thing, right? How mm-hmm. it's a common thing that a lot of people believe that the Bible is whitewashed or it's the white man's religion. And like they've convinced people that, like, how did you come? Because I, th- I think you said you were believing that for a minute. Mm-hmm. How did you come around and how did you realize the truth? So it came through many things, man. So as far as, you know, like, because, all right, put it like this. So the picture of Jesus, they show even where it's like when you trace that history, it's Caesar Bogia. And that's where it's like you, it's literally, I came around because once you start doing that and looking into it and even how it's like, for instance, how they want this separation of church and state, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we got to see it's still handled to some people as a business. Yeah. So as far as when it came for me and my search cash, it's okay, buddy. So as it came to that search, it was more so just understanding that it's still in the text because, yeah, they might give you a, a picture of this color, but then when it describes him, bron- uh, bron- skin of bronze, hair of wool, yeah. you know, it's so many things that you can do to try to cover it up. Yeah. Even the names, you know what I'm saying? Like, so how Peter, that wasn't their names, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, like the thing is, I've actually, I've went back so far to where it even says, like, how the same way, for instance, um... Um, so I'm trying to think of like maybe a, a Hispanic name that when you say it in English, it comes off different. You know what I'm oh, saying? I see, I see so like, Louis. yeah, Luis and Lewis, you know, so stuff like that. And it really it was like, OK, it allowed me to see through that cognitive dissonance that I was holding in my mind, this wall where it's like this is whitewash. You just got to see the same way that. We change and break down names to fit us. They did the same. And the fact is, even with the crusade, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we got to still see there was a historical war behind it to keep us here and keep us how it was. And the fact that it was written many different times in many different ways. So just it really took me, bro. It took to really like you said, that's what Yahweh is. You got to try him because if you don't try him, you're not even trying. You know what I'm saying? If you don't try him, you're not trying. And even it talks about everybody in the book. They tried him, bro. Except for Yeshu. To where even the people he was with all shows their trials. You know? And that's the thing I've been... um, There's uh, on YouTube. It's called... I think it's called the plan or the Bible project. Yeah, the Bible project. Oh, yeah, I love the Bible project, me too, bro. bro. And it's like I be I like I just faithfully project. watch it, bro. Yeah. Just sit there and it's like, cause me, I literally thought I had some problem because every time I try to read, I get tired. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let me find a way to accommodate this, but still get the truth. Mm-hmm. And it was like, okay, and I fell in love with watching the series, bro, because and it's like, especially in our generation we in. Oh my bad, especially our generation we in because. It's it's so hard, you know. We are listening. His dog is over here with him. Cash, Haki. So especially where it's like when the generation win, we always used to watching videos, you know. You we gotta just accommodate. So whenever I started accommodating, my brothers, I'm telling you, it's literally I fall asleep with this on my phone. I wake up to it the first thing in the morning, and it's because when you just start seeing the truth, it just literally I love it. It shows how many times we fail, we keep falling, we keep failing, but just that everlasting grace and mercy yeah. so where even where it shows where characters in they can literally bro who was it um i can't remember right now at the top of my head but every time it's like when yahweh wants to he's like you know what i'm about to just wipe this board away it's clean where it's like people can actually oh, just speak and, to and him on like, uh yeah yeah show him his true character yeah, they can yeah, remind yeah. him he's like you know what you're right that is me i'm not like y'all he's like i'm gonna take i'm gonna take away less and he's like i'm gonna take away less and i'm gonna, yeah mm-hmm. it's like our, our prayers have the 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 ability to move God's heart, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's like we, yeah, we don't realize that like our relationship with Him. Some people don't realize it, it is a relationship. Mm-hmm. Like we think like it's just like He's just this big God that sits high and, and and which He does. He sits high, He looks low, but there's a relational. We're we're sons and daughters. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying and it's like we have to have a relationship with him. We have to have conversation. Like, like we're, talk, we're talking to each other. Mm-hmm. We have to talk to God. Yep. And some people think it's like, uh, excuse me, sir. Like, <laughs> yeah. could I please? Like, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, like, you got to be genuine. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If if you, if you the way you talk to your homies in the street, I ain't saying like, of course, put some respect on his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But he, you ain't got a fake and flage when yeah, you're talking yeah. to him. Even there's a verse talking about how, uh, we was talking about this yesterday where it was the tax, the taxpayers mm-hmm. and um, just the Pharisee maybe how he was talking about they was coming in prayer. He was like, look, man, well, I know I'm better than this person because I pay my tithes. I'm fasting. It's just like you got to. It was humble like, exal- yeah. yeah, you got to humble yourself because yeah. he was sitting there exalting all he did. And it was the opposite on the other side where he was so humble. So that's where yeah. it's like just be able to come genuinely talk to him about whatever is really on your heart and your mind and he already so. knows our hearts and he knows our <sighs> mind so it's like you might as well just come clean and tell him everything that you got going on so he can help you 
to be real with him is to be real with yourself. So how real are you being with yourself at that point? Because that's really what it is. If he already knows, at this point, it's you being real with yourself to be able to bring it up yeah. and give it up to him. He came on here preaching. Nah, that's really Get all real, praise though. to the most high. That's really real, man. And um, do y'all have any final thoughts as far as like for somebody that's like, man, I don't really believe. I don't really, you know what I'm saying? I don't I don't know about this whole Christian like thing. I don't know. I mean, really, it's just us. We have to just show our fruits and, you know, <laughs> just continue to just be like servants of God and just you know, just let other people know the way through our actions. Also tell them, you know, because it's important to spread the gospel, but also like through your actions, I feel like that's really important, you know, because a lot of people are like, oh, you're not practicing what you're preaching. And I feel like that's where, where people don't really want to follow Christ mm -hmm. because I don't yeah. know, a lot of people just have like um, those problems with the church, how they've been hurt by the church. And they're like, oh, Christians are like this, Christians are like this. But, you know, it's just because Christians aren't, being like an accurate depiction of Christ, yep. you know, yeah. and that's really what the problem is. So we that's have to good. show the love of Christ. That's good for sure. Yeah, you gonna you gonna you gonna stamp that that same. I thing? mean, yeah. shoot, it was, you yeah, know, nah, and it's just more that's, so. It's really it, like yo, and it's you just really. I mean, think about if it if it's not this real and serious, how has it survived all this time to even where, you know what I'm saying, like with the whole spirituality. Don't get me wrong, bro, because I, I went down that path. When I say I went down that path, bro, I went down that path. Mm -hmm. So where it's like, yo, just understanding, you got to see it's weird because spirituality came as a trend. But it really, this has been here the whole time, you know what I'm saying? And even where a lot of people, like she said it, like you said, actually, is the Nephilim, the Fallen. And what I was telling her the other day, it's like people are into this because they see it as a cheat code. But what is a cheat code if you don't know how to play the game by itself to the foundation of it? Mm. So it's like people are trying to use crystals to manifest and charge up. They're trying to do yeah. everything mm. else around the sun, but just do what you got to do in the first place. It's like GTA. You're trying to put cheat codes in, but you don't know how to play the game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's real. So you just got to start from, start from the bottom, that foundation. And that's literally what the book is, is giving us foundation. Every problem that we occur and have in life is because we're simply not going through that. It tells us discernment, people to watch out for it, watch out for ourselves. Yeah. It literally tells us how to move, bro. And that's the thing. Like, literally, I like that's what I like yeah. it because it shows how all those people literally like even Solomon, you know, what I'm saying like where there's people who had everything lined up. Yep. But it just shows the simple things that caused them to fall, bro. Even David, my man's all it took was Bathsheba up there. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? My man just he done sent bro the front line. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You it, risked it all for real. <laughs> you feel yeah, me? It so it's just that serious, bro. Yeah. And you can look back and if you read that, you can just sit there and get those lessons where you don't have to go through them yourself. That's real, man. I appreciate y'all. I'm gonna Thank let y'all so much. Appreciate y'all for real. Gotta follow yeah, yeah. My Instagram's on there, and also if you scan, I don't know if you got your phones yeah, on here. Nah, it's all good. See, y'all just living yeah. for real. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. just living. So you gonna have to try to memorize the yeah, uh, the Instagram will, for sure. Okay, for sure, man. Thanks, and what's your appreciate name again, G? Kevin. Kevin Kato. Nice Likewise, and what's your name, brother? Justin. Justin. Nice to meet you, man. Man, yo, we definitely gonna have to get back yeah, up for real. Sure. That was a great conversation. I appreciate you. Got that. Appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Likewise. Nice to meet you, Justin. Nice to meet you. Kevin and Justin. Yep. Nice to meet you, Kato China. Hey, we gonna definitely get back with y'all. For sure. Wait, wait, I think we can just do the Instagram Yeah, go check, check, <laughs> check out the IG. Check out the IG. Underscore normally different underscore. Normally different? Okay, nice. Oh, yeah, it's locked in. Yeah, 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 ye
I knew I, it's a plan, right? But I could sit here and tell you tarot cards, uh, uh, what's all the zodiac signs, all that stuff. I could Crystals tell you how bad it is, right? Mm -hmm. But it's different when you hear somebody who went unprompted talks about how they they went through it. They Man. talked about it. They 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 did the stuff. Yeah. And then came to realize that it was wrong and came yeah. to believe in Christ. Um, and so, power to testimony, man. Yeah. It's the, it's the Bible. One thing, I like, it's it's a little bit scary. I'm not going to go too, too deep in it, but mm -hmm. the, the whole New Age spirituality. Oh, yeah. It's very scary how many people are, I don't want to use the word confused because that has a negative connotation. It's I mean, some people are confused. Some people are misguided. Yeah. Influence. Okay, that's the word I'll use. It's 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 scary how many people are so easily influenced by that. Yeah. Um, and those it's it's things like that that only make me want to just like, man, I gotta read my word because there's so much out here now, and I didn't know about the the whole crystal stuff until I got on like TikTok and stuff like that. Like I didn't yeah. know about that stuff. No, it's real. And then people are like doing crystals and like I knew zodiac stuff, all of that, but I didn't realize how many people were like, "That's faith, like that. That's God to me." And I'm like, oh, yeah. "Wow, that is it's very like, eye opening." Praying to the universe. Yeah, manifestation. Um, manif yeah, I'm just like, I don't know, I manifest man. Manifest my like it's it's all. Here's what it really is. I believe that we all have an innate, uh, natural understanding that. God is real. Right. We may not want to believe. Mm -hmm. We may have been convinced otherwise. Mm -hmm. We may have gone through pain and somehow attributed our pain to God. Yeah. And so we reject the idea of God. Mm -hmm. But I believe that all humans within us know there is a God. Yeah. Now, all this new age stuff is, is trying to find God in something through else. something else. I think that and like, because it's, it's easy. It's easier than easier yeah. than what the Bible, a, a faith like the a Bible faith. Yeah. Um, to live like Jesus, it's more. It's easier. Like it's easier for me to say, I'm gonna just shake these crystals. <laughs> I'm gonna shake these crystals, and it's gonna be all right. And that's easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And of course, that's not, not what funny. it is. But like, I'm laughing at it's it. easier for them to. Shake you know, I'm gonna crystals. shake these crystals, or I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put. Uh, I'm doing this. I'm living foul because I'm a Capricorn. It's easier to chalk yeah, it up yeah. to that than yeah. I'm just yeah sinful in nature. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, how you doing? You guys want to be on the podcast? All right. All right. Yes, sir. That's a no. <laughs> he didn't respond at all. At all. <laughs> he just, it was just kept walking. elegant no. Hey, get my man. Let's talk to See if he can come back on here. His name was TJ, right? I think Tay. Tay, I don't know. I don't know. I'm terrible with it. T. Just T. Tea. Come, come come back on here, man. We we got to get you on here for real. Oh uh, man, because we we just talking. I think you saw us with somebody else, and we end up kind of overlapping some of the conversations. And tell the people your name. Hi, I'm uh, Octavian Norman. Uh, should I do the podcast? No, <laughs> my podcast. Oh yeah, you can plug your podcast. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm from the Drunken Ship Podcast. We talk about gaming, movies, comics. So if you like that, you should check us out on all platform services and. I'm on their platform today. <laughs> For sure. So yeah. I know you you were skating around. Yeah, so. I'm so tired a little bit. So. <laughs> Sorry. If you, if you hear him breathing hard, he was skating around. Um, so you had some good questions, man. Yeah. Um, how do, you know, why do you believe? Like, how can you know? Um, what's, what is a thing that you, what's preventing you from believing in God fully? Uh, like you said earlier about fully, that's a good question. Cause well, I just don't know. Yeah. I mean, people have this feeling when they go to church, a spiritual feeling. And for a very long time, I never understood what that was. Mm. I want to experience that. Mm. And in fact, like I, I'm a very curious person. Mm. Uh, so I want to like understand why they feel that way or what makes them go through that way. Yeah. And I personally, I never experienced that, but, uh, also, like, you know, talked about earlier how the Bible describes certain things that seems supernatural. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, 
seems unrealistic. Mm-hmm. Hate to put it that way. I don't want to sound ignorant when it comes to this stuff. Nah. Um, but, but I uh, mean, we we even when that's what I said to you, I was yeah. like, it don't make sense. Mm-hmm. Or it, it a lot of the Bible is unrealistic in the literal sense of mm-hmm. that don't seem like it could be real. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, not to cut you off, but, but yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I'm with you on that. Um, but uh, like I said before, uh, I am agnostic. Um, personally, people that don't believe, I don't understand why they uh, uh, choose to outright say that he doesn't exist. Or, oh, so so like atheists? Yeah. yeah. I, I, personally, I, I believe both sides. Um, don't take this offense, but I think it's so, sort of an ignorance. Because um, like realistically, for me, I I don't think anyone really knows mm. until the time comes, which is you know death. Yeah. Right. Um, but for me personally, like if it, he's real, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, yeah. Man, yeah. Here's my thing, and I, I'm. You're like right there, mm-hmm. like you believe, you believe there is a God, right? Uh, or do you believe you you believe in the idea of a deity? Like you're not you're I'm not, not a, a, yeah a guest in anything. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. And you're curious, mm-hmm. right? And so. I don't want you right now. I don't. I'm gonna be straight up. I don't want you to go to hell, right? Mm-hmm. I have the love of Christ for you, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know you. I just met you, but I have the love of Christ for you, right? Yeah. And I would be sad to find out that if I went if I went home and I saw you on the news because God so forbid so. you passed away. Yeah. I would be sad to say like, man, he didn't make that decision to accept Christ, and. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because accepting Christ is the way to heaven, right? And to be straight, I think it's valid that because we don't, because you don't know, you can't fully believe and put your trust in. I think that's 100% valid. But I don't think it's valid enough to go to hell. That Does that make sense? sense? That makes sense, yes. I, I don't think that you have enough against god because some people yeah. are just straight up like no. god don't exist yeah god yeah, which i'm I, also not i'm not a, right that, yeah you don't have enough going towards the other way to say ah like i think that i think that you should read i mean i'm sure you've read the bible to some some some, yeah. some degree um but I, I really recommend you just to read the gospels matthew mm-hmm. mark luke and john and look at the life of christ and say man was this guy's life first of all could i live this guy's life answer is gonna be no right he lived a perfect life and it's like man when you read the teachings of of christ his sermon on the mount you read all the things that he talked about you can't deny how influential he is how um, ethical his, his teachings are um and just how perfect his life was, right? Now, you can debate people, you know, did he really die, blah, blah, blah. From a historical standpoint, because some people, some people believe just f- just for faith alone. Mm-hmm. Some people need the, the, the facts of science, of geography, of archaeology. We have the proof that he died, right? We have the testaments of the people 40 days after his death, up to 40 days after his death, over 500 people have an account of his existence. They saw him, you know, after hands in his, you know, nails in his hands. What am I trying to say? The holes in his hands. Oh, you know, yeah, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, this is, you know what I'm saying? And so, whether I believe in Jesus or not, I have to, I have to admit that he was real. Um, and I have to admit that he lived a great life. You know what I'm saying? And so... Yeah, man. I don't. I'm not. I don't want to force you into any any decision, but I just know that God loves you. I love you, and I don't want you to to live in in eternity without Him. Mm. Um, uh, so it's a common question that they tell the Christians. You see the world around you, the things that's going on from COVID, war, homeless people, all mm-hmm. that stuff. Why uh, why does it exist if God is this caring, loving being, you know? Mm-hmm. Why do those people have to suffer while, like, us 
doing this while someone across the street is dying, you know? Yeah. How's that fair? Man, <laughs> it's a great question. I'm smiling yeah. because literally last night I started writing this. I don't even do spoken word, but I literally just had the idea to do this spoken word thing called Life is Not Fair. Mm -hmm. um, and I talk about Job, um, who in the Bible, I don't know if you're familiar, but it was a man that lived, it says he lived a blameless life. Um, and he said that he was one of the greatest men in the East. And Satan goes to God basically and it's like, I don't think that Job really loves you for you. I think Job loves you for the things he has. And so God literally allows Satan to um, inflict Job with these sores all over his body. Um, eventually he takes all of his possessions away and his family, like it's, it's a whole bunch of stuff. And um, Job is still faithful, right? And it's like, you could say, man, how Job lost everything. His own wife told him to curse God and die. And it's like, what would make this guy continue to worship God? And it's because we don't worship God based on the things that happens, right? Um, I'm, getting a little, I'm getting a little aside of myself. I'm going to go back directly to your question, which is, why is is the question why all this stuff is happening? Mm -hmm. So I would ask, and I'm gonna answer, but I would ask why why do you expect it not to? Um, because uh, well, no one deserves that. Hmm. No one deserves uh, some sort of pain or suffering. Why? Right? Because well, it, it hurts. That's the honest question. No one it's it's not a good way to live. You know, right. no one should be coughing their lungs out or no one should be at war killing each other and mm. yeah we should all have a peaceful life but you know like one of the questions that confuse one of the things that confuse me with god is like you see these things happening and mm -hmm. if he's like you know it's all powerful being yeah why do you allow that so i think it go I, comes down to the the idea of free will free yep. will I was just I was just about to say something about that because God gave us free will mm -hmm. and when he did so he gave Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve dominion over everything in the garden until over the world really he told them don't eat this the tree from this one fruit What's up, fellas? Yeah, y'all talking, y'all writing mad low. I'm like, oh, sorry. Oh, my fault. <laughs> I'm going I'm to I'm switch it up high. I'm going to sit with y'all, man. He got some stuff for y'all, man. Okay, <laughs> bet. For sure. Out, for sure. Yeah, he, he, he's a deep thinker, man. Okay. He's way behind me. What's your name, boss? Uh, Maddox. 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 Okay, Kevin. Nice to I meet you. Justin. Um, So, we talking about, like, his question was, if God is real, like, why is all this bad stuff happening, people yeah. sick, you know, everything, murder, all this stuff, right? Um. When Adam, when Adam ate the fruit, the forbidden fruit, sin entered the world. The Bible yeah. says sin entered the world, right? Mm. And so at that point, we live in an imperfect world. Mm. So we're subject to sickness, death. We're subject to all of these bad things happening, right? And so God can't, we can't have free will and everything be perfect, right? God gave me free free will. It's about to sound crazy, but if I decide to slap my brother right now, right, that wouldn't be a good thing. Mm -hmm. But for God to prevent me from slapping my brother, he would have to take away my free will, which would inevitably take away my ability to actually love God. <laughs> because that's what it all comes down to. He wants us, like any good father, to love him, right? Yeah. And so I can't love him if I don't have a choice. You know what I'm saying? And so because we have choices and because there is sin and, and because there is the devil, bad things happen. People kill people. There's sickness. Yeah. There's death. There's, you know, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Um, and so it's unfortunate. But on the other end, because of that, we do have free will. We do have the ability. And so I don't want to live in a world where I don't have the choice to do anything. Mm. Yeah, but the, the Adam, the Adam Eve, the apple situation isn't that free will allow them to get that apple if they want it? Say, it, say that one more time. The apple, Adam Eve, mm -hmm. you know, don't go to that tree. Yeah, isn't that free will? Yeah, to let them do that mm -hmm. for sure. But he punished them for that, right? And that's the thing. 
he could have he could have made them slaves. He could have made them be born and do whatever I say, and you have no choice, right? Mm-hmm. But at that point, they wouldn't have a, a choice to love him. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> so let, me, uh, let me break it down. Okay. Okay. This is my brother, right? Yeah. This is my blood brother. We we have the same parents <laughs> and everything, all right? Um. Holy Spirit, help me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. I'm gonna do it this way. I'm not gonna do that. He gave them free will, right? And they chose to sin. Mm -hmm. We still, just because we have free will, we're not um, subject to God's command. Mm. Now, we can choose to disobey him, but there are consequences, right? Mm. Because at the end of the day, God doesn't create rules because he's just this dictator that doesn't want us to do stuff, right? He He didn't tell them to not eat the fruit off the tree because... He just was selfish about that one tree. He literally gave he literally gave them the whole the whole right. garden, which is representative of the whole world, dominion over the whole world, and said that there's that one tree. Don't eat off that. Because he knows that if they eat off the, the fruit off this tree, what happened will happen, which is sin enters the world, sickness, all of the things that you talk about. And so that's what he tried to prevent them from from doing. Right? So he allowed it to happen, you saying? He did. Why? Because God chooses to partially limit his omni uh opponents. Yes, his yeah. omnipotence yeah. um to give us free will. God has the ability to make us do anything. Right now, if God wanted to lift me off the ground and make me fly back, yeah. he could. But he don't want to do that because it's crazy. Go ahead, Jess. I want to say something that that helps me with this whole thing. Um, and this may be a little bit off topic, but I say that if God granted us everything that we wanted or all the good to happen or all the for there's nothing to be bad, there's no suffering, there's no there's no war, there's no famine, none of these things. I think it comes to a point where it's like, how would we cool. how would we come to rely on him then? Because if mm-hmm. we're if we're to be given every single thing, right? what would we then need him for? How would we, as flawed humans, how would we, how would we, how would know we come to, to grips appreciate him with God? How would, exactly. How would we, as, as clearly not God, um, you know, that we, we, we're not perfect at all, evidently. <laughs> um, how would we come to him if, if he never gave us a reason to need him by doing everything that we on earth wanted? It sounds like he's limited, he's limiting humans what he can do. Right, because because no. it's like I mean, like you just said about I, I truly believe. I mean, I'm in a freaking Superman shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he believes it's good in everything, no matter how bad it is. You say God believes it's good in I'm everything. Talking about Superman. Oh, Superman. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. He believes in this is my favorite hero of all time. Okay, and, uh, he believes in like you know, no matter how many bad things happen, or like you know, someone like the Joker, he kills people. Mm-hmm. There's no good in him. You see it clearly. Superman would have killed him. He believes fully, like, hey, there's still good in him somewhere. He would do anything possible to make that good come out. Mm-hmm. In person, I believe a world like that, too, where, like, you know, bad things happen. Mm-hmm. But I do, as a uh, society, humanity, where we can do better. Um, I don't personally believe we need, I guess, God's approval or whatever to... Uh, uh, I guess... Uh, to be good, yeah. Mm-hmm. To be good, no. Uh, I agree. I, I agree. Um, I would agree because there there are atheists that are good people in yeah. the sense of. I Man, I have morals. friends as atheists. And yeah. They're, they're yeah. generally good people. Yeah. Man, you know, there's Christians. There's you know, sadly bad people mm-hmm. um, out there. Um, how to use the the religion to control people for mm-hmm. wrong things, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I I just don't understand why he seems to. There's things he can seem he can do in this world, mm-hmm. but he doesn't do it. And I, that's why yeah. some atheists exist. Like they get so fed up with the world around them, they're yeah. like, "Why would you let that happen?" Yeah, you know. Um, that's what makes them lose faith of God. Um, and no, that's why I just 
I just don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I just yeah. don't know. Yeah. Oh. And I and I think though, even with atheism, right? You're expecting for good things to happen to you. I'm not saying this is all atheists. Yeah. But for some atheists, they're fed up with how can there be a God and all of this stuff happens, right? Mm. How can there be a God and my dad dies in a car accident, right? Mm. If you don't have free will, you can't drive, right? We don't have the freedom to drive. We don't have the freedom to do this. Like God's love for us allow him to give us free will. Now with that, let's let's take it back to the apple. Or I don't want to say apple. We don't know what it is. The fruit. The forbidden fruit. Yeah. yeah. If if they didn't eat the fruit, we wouldn't be having this conversation, right? I think about this all the time. Yeah. This is this yeah. is this is the the fault of man, mm-hmm. right? And the Bible says Adam ate the fruit, but Jesus was good. And like I said, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And the, the Bible refers to Jesus as the second Adam, who is the redemption for us, who is the the Lamb of God, the sacrifice. So that we can, because of all the stuff that's twisted and messed up and all this stuff, that no matter what happens on earth, no matter what wrong happens to me, at the end of the day, I have my so I have my eternal security. I, I know that when I die, I'm going to heaven. Wait, I have a question though. Yeah. So what happens to atheists uh, when they die, like after they get judged? Well, the Bible, according to the Bible. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody gets to the Father but through me. So I would have to assume that if you're an atheist, you haven't decided to put your faith in Jesus, that you wouldn't make it to heaven. So where would you go? Hell. So I have, a, I have a question. So to me, I don't think any moral being or any being, like any moral conscious being, will create like a, an infinite punishment for any type of finite crime or finite sin. So can you explain that to me? Yeah. So... Hell is not a place that people go because God is punishing them, Mm -hmm. right? Hell is a place where people go because they decide to pay for their own sin, right? And so Jesus, God, through Jesus, created an an opportunity for us to escape hell, right? Because without Jesus, we can't make it to heaven. And so um, God said, I'm going to send my only son to live a perfect life to die so that you can make it to heaven now if you choose not to believe in 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 that and you choose not to accept that there's consequences but that doesn't sound like very uh, very moral at all especially going in eternal eternal hell especially in a place like hell like an eternal punishment like especially where you're burning in like a like a fire that doesn't seem very moral like and it sounds like he's punishing you for yeah. not believing him. But I understand that yeah. you send yourself there like because you don't believe in him but even still I don't think he would create a place where you could, that's a possibility you know so God, I don't believe the Bible says that God created hell. I'm saying, all right, so like. Allow for there yeah, to be a hell. Yeah. yeah, like that's a place you could, that's a possibility, you know. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Mm-hmm. That's a great question. And I would, I, would be, uh, I would be foolish to act like I knew, you know what I'm saying? Because in my, in my humanness, in my, I don't, some, yeah. certain, certain things yes, I know. that I just don't know. Um, I think that's a great question. I think, like, I could tell by the way, like, you think, like, <laughs> yeah. you're a deep smart. thinker by <laughs> yeah, the way that you yeah. even would ask that question. Um, but I don't know, man. Mm. I, I, I know that he gave us a way out of hell. Yeah. Um, but again, I think it goes back to that whole free will thing. Mm-hmm. Without a free will, there is no way to love him, really, and then there's no way to, you know what I'm saying? We, we couldn't even... Heaven wouldn't be the same, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. But I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. I don't want to get, I don't want to get you. locked in. I want to get yeah. jammed in. But to that, because um, my brother had mentioned um, earlier, um, actually when he had spoken to you earlier before mm-hmm. we were off camera, um, a lot of it is about um, trying God in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are certain things that we don't have the answers to, like like he said, because we are human and we're yeah. not we're not we're not God, obviously. Yeah. Um, so it's in those times where, um, either it may not be directly biblically, like straight from the Bible yeah. that we got to go to the source himself and be like, you know, big dog, yeah, like, like, yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah. like what's, what's this? And, and through, through genuine mm-hmm. prayer, through genuine, you know, fasting and trying to understand God will sense your heart 
and I, and I, I when you asked that question, yeah. I felt it didn't come from a place of like like judging God. It was kind yeah. of from a place of I'm like just curious. Yeah, curious. genuine yeah. curiosity yeah. and that's a good thing. Um yeah. But definitely he has the answers. Um and it may not again be right in mm. the book screaming at you right there. Yeah. Um so sometimes we got to just, you know, God, what's yeah. what's this all about, you know? So, so I have another question. We just ain't going to know on earth. Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah. like uh like what happens to like believers of other religions like do they get judged the same way as atheists? I kind of brought this up early, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> do they get judged the same way? Like, do they get sent to hell? Like, if if I was like Buddhist, like, and I didn't believe in God, would I be sent to hell? I think the Bible shows us that um, John three sixteen, Romans ten nine, mm -hmm. that the only way to heaven is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Okay. I have to assume that anybody that doesn't do that does go to hell. Well. I, the thing I believe is that, like, a lot of people are Christian because, like, that's, like, the part of the world. Like, over here, like, in this part of the world, like, mm -hmm. this part of the hemisphere, like, a lot of people are Christian. So, like, and a lot of people, like, in, like, China, that's, like, Buddhism, like, that's a big, like, religion. So, mm -hmm. is that their destiny? Is their destiny just to go to hell? Um, Not necessarily, not just off the strength of them mm -hmm. being where they're from. I think that's one of the, the reasons why we have missionaries and people yeah. that are, their assignment is literally to go around the world and spread the gospel so that those people do have a chance to hear Christ. Yeah. Um, one of the things I'll never know on earth, really, but none of us will ever really know, is that, um, you know, that the people that, like, because the argument is that, like, some people just haven't heard the gospel. Uh -huh. Some people haven't read the Bible. Like, yeah. are they, you know, going to go to hell? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I do believe God is a just God. Mm -hmm. I believe he's fair. Um and so I believe that if there's two people, person A, person B, mm -hmm. person A, they're both the same age, right? Yeah. They're, they're, let's just say they're 30 years old. Yeah. And one has heard the gospel and has just refused to believe yeah. that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. And one has heard it, um, or one hasn't heard it at all. I believe that he judges fairly. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes I don't sense. know what that, I don't know. I, I can't yeah, send I that person to heaven yeah. or hell, but I believe he judges fairly. To be honest, like, uh, I don't believe in the Bible, like in the traditional sense, like literally, I think the Bible and all religions are just different, different perspectives of reality. And I think the Bible is very metaphorical and like symbolic, like symbolic. So I don't think God is like a person. I don't think hell is a place. I think hell is like a state of existence. Same thing was happening. So I, I really just don't understand like, like how hell like could be even a, like, even like a possibility. Like that just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. So what is your, do you, do you have a religion or do you? Well, well I just believe like, um, to be honest, like I think all religions, I can't say all religions are different perspective reality. I don't think any religion is right or wrong. I don't think like anything is right or wrong. I think like, like God is like a metaphor for like consciousness or like energy and like uh like heaven and hell that would be metaphors for like good and bad like jesus would be a metaphor for good and uh things of that sort i don't think uh like god exists as a person i don't think hell is a place like that i i still don't understand how that could be even like a possibility and yeah. even like you know that's that's what's like and you know they say the bible isn't we, we kind of take it literal uh, yeah. but it's actually the meaning behind the stories and what these people go through or whatever but use that as your life advice mm, yeah i um, think I think there's parts of the Bible mm -hmm. that are to be taken literally. Mm -hmm. I think there's parts of the Bible that are metaphor and um, they're, they're metaphors, right? Yeah. Um, there's different types of reading styles within the Bible. You have poetry. You have uh, apocalyptic literature. Mm -hmm. Like you Songs. have. You know well, saying? Bible is like one of the best forms of literature. Like just in the history, just in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You have you have Psalms. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The Proverbs. It's, just, it's, it's all different types. And so, if you just read all the whole Bible and read it any one way yeah. you're gonna end yeah. up wrong so yeah. a lot of people tell me that yeah. Um, yeah. yeah yeah but uh refresh me real quick what your what your question is in a i was i just want to ask you like what do you think the bible is like so i believe that, that the bible tells me in john one yeah um in the beginning was the word mm -hmm. and the word was with god mm -hmm. and the word was god he was with god in the beginning and so um the bible is god in written form yeah. you know what i'm saying it's it's jesus in written form um and so i was gonna that's what i was gonna ask you is like do you believe in heaven i know you say you don't really believe hell is a place you believe uh, i heaven? think heaven is also like a state i'm pretty sure heaven to hell i'm pretty sure like heaven is like the state of existence like with god and then hell would be a state of existence, like the absence of god so i don't think like heaven is like a literal place i think that's just like a state of existence like okay and so and so with with that being said mm -hmm. are you prepared to live 
Are you prepared to live in a state of existence without God for the rest of you, forever? Well, um, I'm Make sure you're talking to Mike. Oh, my bad, my bad. Yeah, I'm definitely not prepared prepared to, uh, to go to hell probably. But if that came to it, that would uh, be the circumstance. So um, I guess, but I still don't have the answers, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, those answers I need to ask you. But there's another answer, like question I ask you, like why did God create us like the way we are, and like why why do we perceive existence this way, and like why do we have to exist like this, and not another way? What you mean the way we are? Like to me, like the way we exist and that we per we perceive existence is so random. Like it really doesn't make any sense to me. Like the, even the fact that we're two human beings and like we exist in the universe and we live on a planet, mm -hmm. like that really makes no sense. Like even the fact that you know, <laughs> so I'm asking you, why do we exist this yeah. way and not another way, you know? I don't know. Yeah. Like that's I'm a not even that's, try a, that's a really that burning I mean, question. That's, a, that's, that's a very deep. deep. Yeah, that's that's like one of my like. That's a question when I get to heaven, I have to be like, "Yo, <laughs> I, I met this dude yeah. at Freedom Park, <laughs> and he was, he hit me with a hard yeah, one." Yeah. Um, I don't know though, man. I don't know. I know. Here's what I want to say to you. I don't want you to go to hell. Yeah, Straight I don't, up, I don't right? Go to you know what I'm saying? I don't think you want to go to hell either, right? Well, I'm not saying I don't. I don't. It's not like I don't believe in God. I just believe him like in a different way, you know. Right, but what I'm saying is, I want you to believe in Christ yeah. the way the Bible tells us to, okay. right? Because we could choose to believe in Him however we we perceive or however we want to. Mm -hmm. But there's a way that He's given us, right? There's a way, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's a way He's given us, right? Yeah. And I don't want you, I don't want even a because you you believe in in God, right? Yeah. I don't want the slight variation of what you believe to prevent you from going to heaven. I feel you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it can. If we're being yeah, real. It's possible, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so that's one of the reasons I'm out here because there's people like you that's mm -hmm. like, you believe in God, you're right there. Yeah. But the slight differences is, is really the difference between eternity in heaven, eternity in hell. And, right. and yeah. So you said, um, like it got cold out here yeah, real dude, quick. Like, yeah. I, oh, I've been like, shivering for the past right. five Bro, minutes. Trying to, down. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be still, like. So, like, how did hell come about? Like, if God didn't create it, um, I don't know that from a theological standpoint. Mm -hmm. I have to research that in the scriptures, but my understanding is that when Satan, who was an angel, yeah. um was in defiance or rebelled against yeah. God, mm -hmm. um, he sent he sent him God cast him out of out of heaven. And so I don't know I have to again I have to refresh myself. I don't know that heaven was or hell was created prior to this or if at that moment hell was created. So the question did God create hell? Let's look at Colossians 1 16. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Now, that doesn't mention hell, but it does say that God created all things. John chapter one, verse three says, all things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that had been made. So it doesn't explicitly say that God created hell, but from those two verses, it says that God created everything. Another point that I've learned and thought about that I wish I would have said was that hell wasn't created for people to go to. Hell was created for the devil, Satan, and his angels or demons. And so the only reason a person goes to hell is because they haven't accepted the way to heaven. They haven't accepted the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and they haven't believed and put their faith and trust in him. But the Bible says it is not God's will that any man should perish. God does not want any of us to go to hell, but he's through his son allowed us to be able to receive eternal life with him through salvation. And so for those people that don't accept that, there's only one place to go. Um, but I don't know, man. That's okay. a great. That's a great question. I had to make sure. So I, what is? I, I I don't know this question. So I just want to ask you, like, what yeah. is Satan? Like, like, you know, can you just explain that to me. Yeah. Um, what is Satan? Yeah. So I think Satan was a fallen angel mm -hmm. who um, is now really um, in opposition to God. Yeah. And so, you know, the Bible calls Satan the accuser of the brethren. Um, calls him the father of all lies like and so i think really when i think about satan 
um, he is the the head of all evil or all demonic spirits. Okay. So, like, do you ever like question like your religion at all? Have you, have you ever in the in the past? Um, for sure. I've I've wondered, and this is what the re- one of the reasons we came out here is oh, like yeah. I would like to meet a Christian that has never yeah, 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 once yeah, 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 you yeah, know even right. if it was just like a quick thought. Yeah, you've had that, like yeah. Mm, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's funny you said it because a few months ago we were having a similar conversation at work. Word. We ran about crazy stuff like this and yeah. stuff. But I, you know, I told him about how I feel about religion and God, and I, I told him he he seemed afraid to question him or mm. criticize him for things that exist. Now, to me, that sounds like he's afraid to go to hell for questioning him. Mm-mm. Nope. It, and and I have I literally had it as one of the episodes I'm going to yeah. do this season is. The question, the the episode title was, "Is it okay to doubt God?" And I think if you're being real, every Christian at the end of the day has, I don't want to say necessarily doubted God, but you've questioned like, mm-hmm. God, is that? Are you? You know what I'm saying it's mm-hmm. like you have to. We're we're human beings. Like there's so many things about life that we don't understand. There's so many things about God we don't understand. Mm-hmm. And so I think I can't speak for every Christian, but I I really have a hard time believing that there are christians that haven't at least questioned or been like man is this whole thing like you gotta (laughs) wrestle through that that's a daily wrestle and i think this is coming from me this is not Mm -hmm. like a from a biblical standpoint i think god in a way wants us to question um and i'm not saying like doing the super hard like you know just crazy questioning but in a way god that curiosity that questioning god is a little bit like good you know what i mean he's like he's like good because if you're questioning you're learning you're if you're not questioning then it's kind of you're in a state of i don't want to say unbelief but or just believing because you think you, that's the right because thing you're to like, do. like programmed in a way yeah so that that questioning is like good like you understand this for you and there may not be some things you don't know now i can step in um and kind of show that a little bit more the things that you're not understanding but yeah. the fact that you are questioning is good because now this faith is of your own not just because mom and dad you know yeah, you so know i have another question do you believe like the church has gone corrupt over the years or you think it's like been the same um so the bible says that the church is the body of christ mm. right jesus is the head church is the body right um so i don't believe the church has gotten corrupt i believe that the people of the church and christians oh yeah that's that's what i'm about to ask no but that's a great that's a good question and that's a common question it's like did the church and so i it's it's very clear to make a distinction right you asked it that's my bad no you asked it the right way you know what i'm saying um but it does say that you know it's it's the bride of christ right and so people are flawed, right? People are corrupt. Christians or whoever, atheists, whatever you are, it's people it's the same reason why how they justify slavery. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's like that's a corrupt and perver- perverted um use of the scriptures for their own benefit, mm. right? So absolutely, um you know what I'm saying, it, from the beginning of time or from the beginning of the church, it had people in it yeah. that that were um Corrupt, yeah. Makes sense. So, do I have another question? Like, do you believe in mental slavery? Mental slavery, yeah. break it down. Like, so that's basically being like slave without, like, in a way, but without knowing it, you know, like just mentally. There's many uh, ways, there's like many ways to it. I was about to say, like, a slave to faith, or I'm saying there's ways you can be a little slave to your mind, or yeah. like a slave, like a mental slave to like something else, not to faith. I'm not saying like it can be anything, just anything, okay? Yeah. yeah. So, do you think that exists in religion? Uh, I do think there are people that that blindly believe. I think there are people that believe because they were told to. Um, so I guess in a way, I'll have to say yes. Um, there are people that, I don't I don't know the mental slave, I don't know yeah. that title, but I believe that there are people that don't even really have their own belief. They just kind of believe whatever has been told to them or whatever their parents were taught, yeah. taught them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that essentially they are subject to whatever has been given to them. Well, I believe that like, this might sound kind of crazy, but I feel like most people's thoughts, like, they're not their own thoughts. Like, most people's thoughts are other people's thoughts, like, based on, like, social conditioning. Like, mm-hmm. majority, like, even my thoughts, like, more than my thoughts, they're not even my own. Like, they come from, like, another place. Yeah. You know, so, the thing I don't understand is, I still don't understand how hell could exist. Like, uh, 
when there's like mental slavery in the world and like yeah i just don't understand mm. how that's like just this guy nah I, this is <laughs> nah, guy, nah, i always think about these things but like that's, i never get to good. talk about it like, please yeah. keep thinking like that so <laughs> the reason my brain doesn't go here often right is because i'm confident in my yeah. security right yeah. and so i think I don't have an answer to that question. I feel you. But what I want to what I what I want to re- redirect you to do is to put your faith in Christ. Um and then at that point your questions will start to be different, mm-hmm. right? Because I think the reason you you question hell and you struggle with the idea of hell is because you're not sure where you would go. Mm-hmm. Like if I ask you right now, if you die at this moment, yeah. do you know where you would go? Uh no, there's no way of knowing. And so, I I believe, it, like, once you start to put your faith in Christ and say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, it'll be like, okay, I don't even, I, like, I don't think about hell. Yeah. I mean, I do, but I, like, hell is not at the forefront of my mind because I'm just like, you were concerned I'm, about no, I'm not him. going. I'm trying yeah. to prevent other people from yeah, going, but um, I think our, your perspective will start to shift. Yeah. It's just it's still like it's still kind of hard for me like to like grasp it like as I go older I probably like to understand it a little bit more. It's yeah. just like an eternal like a like an eternal like an eternal hell like where you're just burning alive like I don't know. Do you think religion is more of a coping mechanism? I think for some people it can be. Um, I think for some people they can use religion as a coping mechanism or as an escape from the realities of life. Um, I think for those that are genuine about their relationship in Christ that um it's not it's not a coping mechanism it is it's it's i think there's a difference between religion and relationship Mm -hmm. religion for a lot of people is certain things right but my relationship with christ is personal i don't choose to serve god just so that i can feel better or i don't choose to serve god just so that bad things don't happen to me um but i choose to serve god because he loves me i love him um and i don't want to be apart from him right why not i mean not saying i know that sounds crazy but no no no, no, that's a valid question um because god's proven to me through his scripture and through my experience that life with him is the best way to live that I'm I'm at I gotta be careful. That life apart from him is just not good. Does that I'm, make sense? Uh well but again like the other religions and mm-hmm. they could feel the same way. <laughs> you know? Uh like what makes them like you said about Buddha, you know. They could feel the same way about you, you know. They they think like you know, without my God, you wouldn't be like my life, a better life than it, you know. Yeah, I think again, I think the difference between I mean, is that right to say like you know, you would have a better life or something without God or whatever? Um, a better life without are you saying. Like I'm following. You saying like, can other people have a better life than me that don't serve yeah, God? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Ecclesiastes shows me that my life here on earth is not necessarily tied to my good actions, right? And so, um, <laughs> I think that's a great question. I think that when I look at it that way, it really comes down to a choice. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm choosing to serve God. I'm choosing to love others and i think through that i'm fulfilling my purpose right which is that's really what it comes down to a lot of things is purpose um it's like some people can just live like these people are all we're all having fun we're all having a good time we're at the park right um but i feel i feel like you truly get real fulfillment from life when you start to fulfill your god-given purpose does that make sense i mean yeah, I mean, like, say those people there could be, they all could be atheists, but they're right. generally great people. For right? sure. They're genuinely great atheists. But they would get 
punished for not believing in him, despite doing the great things for people around him. But I think that goes into the 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 chip of our our actions don't get us into to heaven in terms of being a Christian. Um, our deeds on earth are not like I could give to the homeless every single day. Uh, I could be a good Samaritan. I could do great things for people. Um, that alone is not enough to get me into into heaven. You don't think it should? Hmm? You don't think it should? It can't. That, that they, they can't because, because that, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Because at that point, how do you how do you quantify how good is good enough? How many good things did you do versus him? If you help ten homeless people and he helped nine, who's worthy of heaven? No, neither. We both we both did a good thing. So you do one thing and you get yes. into heaven. I mean, just in general, like I think the concept of people, you know, like for me personally, you know, like I say, like mm -hmm. wave at someone across the street. Mm -hmm. That wave can make that person's lives better, and it, that can pass on to other people. We're right. doing a good thing, uh, <laughs> but. You know, it doesn't. I don't think it matters how big or small what helping or good thing it is. I think generally a good person should be allowed to go to heaven because they did the right thing. And so, how do you define right. good? Well, uh, good and bad are like both man-made concepts. Like, so like what we conceive as good, like somebody else like might not perceive as good. You know? Which is why that it's Whoa. <laughs> so that, that we can't be the ones to determine. Yeah, that. that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deep. <laughs> now they, they mob them. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Yeah. Um. Jesus. How do you define good? Uh. It makes people feel better. So how do so, you define good? Well, to me, I think good and bad are like both man-made concepts. So I understand like what you're saying, like like a certain amount of good going to get you into heaven because those are both man-made concepts. Well, but if I had a definition of good, I would say like just something positive but that's also a man-made concept so like you know yeah so i think i think we're all born with a, a conscience right yeah. that steers us and i think there are not everything there aren't a whole bunch but i think there are certain moral absolutes right mm -hmm. things of this is morally absolutely good or bad right um i think we need the bible to determine every other thing that's relative right whether that's good or bad because otherwise i leave goodness the concept of goodness to my own discretion which is the same reason why the holocaust and the nazis were able to do that because they genuinely convinced themselves that this they, they, they they were, were doing the right a good thing, thing yeah. right well that happens all the time like like even like they're like uh like uh what's it called i forget the word like osama bin Laden. like he just yeah. he thought he was doing yeah. the right thing but, like, but you yeah. brought up a good point and that's what my thing was going to be is that that's why that is hard to wrestle with because from a human perspective, our term of good is subjective. Yeah. Your definition of good may not be his. Yeah. Yours might not be mine. So what is then the merit of good? So is it just you guys, you want us to. So your goal, what is, what is your goal then? Like, do you want us to not go to hell, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. I want you to, I want you to not only not go to hell, I want you to go to heaven, but I also want you to fulfill your purpose on earth and to receive and walk in God's love here. Is right? that considered a good deed to you? A good deed? Yeah. To for go to God? heaven? Yeah, for God. Like, are you doing a good thing for God? What? Why are you doing that? What's your purpose? You're doing a good God? thing for you. Like, me going to heaven don't... I mean, God loves me, so he wants me to be with him, but mm -hmm. he's God. It don't do him no yeah. favors. Like yeah. At that it, point, he would just be the messenger. You choosing to accept Christ. For your life and and to to believe that jesus you know died on the cross and that you are saved through salvation that would then be you know your choice he would only be the vessel by which god used him to communicate that to you um but it would you know it would ultimately be your choice um so i think that for him could we say that it would be good for him um in terms of his feeling yeah I would feel good. good to feel good to lead someone to 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 Christ, um, but it's not like God is like you have to do these good things. Are they good? And would God be pleased with it? For sure. Yeah. Um, but is it like He has to do that thing, um, and that's considered a good? If that makes sense. That's what it generally sounds like to me, though. Like. Uh we gotta follow what he does. So let's yeah, let's yeah. do this, because okay. I, I know 
is a here's an example of how goodness is not enough to get into heaven. Mm-hmm. It's really just about your belief in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. When Jesus was on the, on the cross, it was him and two other criminals, right? Um, and one of the crim one of the criminals, literally on the while the, yeah. they're being hung, Jesus says to him. Because you believed in me, you will be with me in paradise. This man lived a ter- I don't know. I don't say he lived a terrible life, but he died a criminal. Yeah. Right? And so in his last breaths, because he decided to put his faith in Christ, he was granted eternity with- in heaven. Right? So this is a man that did not end on a good. He didn't end doing good things. He didn't end giving to the homeless or helping people cross the street. It's all about your belief in your acceptance that jesus is your lord and savior but i have a question that doesn't really sound like any moral like like very moral like i, I just don't understand how that's moral what do you mean like, like i understand how, like like i don't understand how you like doing good you could like do a good thing and then like just the possibility like even i still don't understand like the possibility of hell like how that's like a moral thing at all yeah because i think i think I think we have a hard time as humans have a hard yeah. time like viewing that whole thing and, and just reconciling that whole thing. Um, because in life, generally we think good action yeah. leads to reward. Yeah. Bad action leads to punishment. Not necessarily the case. Um, Ecclesiastes said, tells you that if you read, I, I recommend read the book of Ecclesiastes. Yeah. It shows that there's not, always a parallel of you do good you get good book of job it's the same thing he lived perfect life but he's somehow rewarded with lesions on his skin and his family gets taken away like but how is that moral though it's it's what you're asking is how's that good like how honest that's not like that like anything with like a moral compass like i assume all everybody here y'all you all all have a moral compass right so would you send like say somebody did like a bad thing like any type of bad thing Mm -hmm. like would you send somebody somewhere for the rest of eternity like the rest of time like if like rest of infinity especially in a place like hell okay here we go yeah you should get happy right yeah because if every time we sin god you know, it, it, like we get a slap on the hand, or God always, like we get what we deserve. Yeah, we would be terrible. Like we mm-hmm. would be very bad off. Every time we did something bad, every time we thought something bad, yeah. every time we did something we weren't supposed to do, we got what we deserve. We would be terrible. God, through Jesus, grants grants us a get to heaven free pass yeah. for on our end. Yeah. Not, it cost Jesus his whole life. But literally, he's saying, you can you can live a terrible life, do all these things, and if you believe in my son at the end of your life, it's people that die on their deathbed, yeah. and on their deathbed, they've Fast given their life to yeah. Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They made it in. It don't matter what they've done. It don't matter who they were, what mm-hmm. they, all the stuff they went through, their belief. And so if you think about it, we really have... Like, I mean, I don't, like, I we had the world's greatest gift. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I just don't understand how like an infinite punishment for a finite crime. Like I understand how that's any. Like I understand like doing something like parallel, but that's like a very big like you know like an infinite and finite. Like that's like very big. That's a very big difference. Not no little thing. Like yeah. I understand parallels, but I understand how you get punished infinitely, especially in a place like hell. It's not even like a regular places. Like it's, it's hell. So I understand yeah. how that's moral, like or just like at, at, at all. Yeah. So I think you're looking at it as if like. That's the thing. Heaven, you don't get to heaven by being good. Yeah. You get to heaven by being righteous. Uh-huh. And our righteousness is through Jesus, yeah. right? And so I'm unrighteous. I'm an unrighteous man yeah. in my own nature, right? You have to be considered spotless to make it to heaven. And so anything that's not spotless yeah. can't go to heaven, right? Yeah. But that's our choice. So it's not God's not God's not saying like you're bad so things, bad you, you're yeah. so bad that you gotta go to hell. God's saying it's a choice. Dang, son, I really wanted you to make it to heaven. I gave my I only you, son yeah. for you. And you didn't do it. You didn't and so you don't 
you're not spotless, you're not made righteous. Yeah. And so I can't make an exception mm-hmm. when I already made I already gave everything. I gave my only son. Yeah. You know what well, I'm saying? To underst- like I understand what you're saying, but to be honest, like I don't think I, I still don't like I don't think that answer is like an infinite punishment. Like infinite, that's like such a long time. And to be honest, like hell, like it just it just doesn't make sense to me. Not, not yeah. on the back, but what you said, like it's not about good or bad you go into the heaven or hell, I guess. Say that again. Uh it doesn't matter how good you are or bad you are to go to heaven. Mm-hmm. Right. But you see like people like Hitler. Yeah. Like, he believes in like say he believes in Jesus or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, that allows him to go to heaven. Yeah. Well that makes sense. But so, no, I mean does it? Because it's like this is a terrible human being, clearly. Well, it's not so just the, the belief piece exactly. Um, it would be him, you know, confessing that his life now is made made yeah. because of, of of Jesus Christ. Because that's that's the, the Bible says we have to confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, um, and that doesn't mean to just oh I confess. That means and believe it in your heart. Yeah, um, is the, is the other piece of it. Um, so it's that it's through that belief, um, and that belief. It's a it's a changing of your heart. It's a purification of your heart. So it's not that you just, oh, now I confess, and now, but I still have the thought that I want to commit genocide. Um, you wouldn't. You no longer would have that, you know, that that unclean heart because that that heart couldn't, you know, well, it, in a way, it could, but that's the whole point is of why we need um, Jesus in the first place. Uh, it's because it's it's that. Go ahead and yeah, because I see no, you. You good? So, yeah. Uh, so I mean, faith without work. The Bible says faith without works is dead, right? And so repentance is. We accept Jesus Christ, right? But repentance is also required, right? You can't just you can't just say I believe in Jesus, and then you live you wild in your whole life and you never repent of your sins and if we truly repent the the uh greek word for repent means to turn away to literally move turn your position if i'm headed this way in sin and i repent i turn away from right and so it's a heart posture change of sin if i've truly repented i can't continue to do the things that go against the teaching of christ right not in good, not in good conscience, right? And so, um, the Bible says in James chapter two, uh, "What good is it if my brothers and sister, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds, can such faith save them?" So, saying your faith alone is not the only thing. You do have to have your right. You have to walk. You have to do the things of Christ, right? Can such faith, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, "Go in peace, keep warm and, and well fed," but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? What good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. So Hitler, he even if he said he believed in Christ, his action doesn't align with his faith. So are those bad deeds? Those are bad. What, what do you mean? What's bad deeds? His actions. What you Hitler's? Mean by, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's definitely bad deeds. So that stopped him from going to heaven. Um, he said he's not going to heaven because he didn't repent. Yes, his lack of repentance. His lack of repentance would, for sure. And now if Hitler, at the end of his life, well, truly, truly yeah. met Christ and was like, I'm so Lord, I, yeah, Lord yeah. I'm sorry, I I. I I repent for all the things I've done. His sins will be wiped away through the blood as of Jesus. Horrible as horrible as they are. And I know that sounds crazy. I, I don't agree with that. <laughs> because that because you think that your works save you. You think that there's a, a, a level of good that can get you to heaven, which is dangerous because how do you define how good it is? Is good. So what if Hitler kills all those people and at the end of his life, the back end of his life, he, I don't know, creates an adoption center and helps all these people and gives away millions of dollars to the homeless. Does that wipe away? No, it doesn't. It still means he's doing still good deeds. But so he would still be getting to heaven? No. Why I not? Because I mean, he's still doing good deeds, but it, it kind of doesn't contradict what he did in the past. So have you ever lied? Yes, everyone has lied. Have you ever cheated? No. Have you ever stolen? No. 
Have you ever had lust? No. Well, I mean, everyone has lust. So I'm yeah. saying, at that point, you're not worthy of heaven, right? And so there's no amount of good that you can do to get into heaven, right? And so as bad as it sounds, you killing a person and you telling a lie is the same. It's sin. It still separates you from God and it it cre- you're you're unrighteous. So you you managed to go to heaven and you I guess I don't know how it works, but you see Hitler there. <laughs> <laughs> what would you be your reaction? Praise Jesus. You say what's up? What up, big dog? <laughs> like, I Praise don't know. Jesus. I would I would I mean I would, honestly you my wouldn't reaction like, would be like, Oh, before he died he must have repented mm-hmm. and accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. You wouldn't That's question only- it at all? No. Wait, I wouldn't so care. I have another question. I'm at I'm I'm at, I'm at the crib with, I mean, with the father. I'm <laughs> but, cool. You, yeah, but you're right. You but major would, you major what you want to like, go oh, to. Wow. Yeah. He, he made it in. <laughs> like I I personally wouldn't because for me to do that would then me kind of in a way question God's authority and be like, oh, yeah, Are you yeah, sure yeah, him? Yeah. Are you sure him? And then at that point, what's my determination? Because. If we want to look at if we want to look at my rap sheet for the things that I've done for the sins that I've committed, of course I didn't commit mass genocide, but I've done bad things in my life. So what? What's now the level of how is it that how, this how is, good is yeah good how, how how and how bad is bad you know yeah it's you can't there's you no can't. amount. So yeah. I have a question about heaven. Like, what do you do when you get to heaven? You worship God. So like. Do you think, like, what do you think? So you just do that for, like, for the rest of eternity? Yes. So yes. do you think you would get bored of that, like, after a couple hundred trillion years? No. No, because so there's, there's no pain, there's, there's no levels, suffering. There's new levels of revelation, like, God reveals. Like, you literally spend eternity learning the depths of God, which is, I know it seems like. So do you think that would drive you crazy, like, after a couple, like, the human brain? Do you think that would drive you crazy, like, after a couple, like, hundred trillion years? But it says, no, pulling? because... We don't have the human brain okay, then. Yeah. But I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I remember as a kid one time yeah, specifically, yeah, yeah. I thought of the idea of being in one place forever. Ever. And I got scared. Yeah. Like I, I'm talking about heaven. I'm not uh-huh. even thinking about hell. I'm thinking about heaven. And I really, I remember it. I was young and I was like, the idea of one, I'm, I'm in one place. I still wrestle with it. Because we, yeah, because we... Is we, it considered hell for someone else? No, nah, I'm saying like, couldn't that like, <laughs> couldn't that become like at least boring? I get what you're like, yeah, yeah, I get like but, quintillion years. Like, do you think at least come a, the slightest bit more? I don't think so. I think the Bible also says I can't remember the scripture to be honest, but time is different. Huh? Oh yeah, heaven, time is relative. You right? I think yeah, yeah. It, I think it says like a thousand. I don't even want to make something up, but like a thousand years yeah. on Earth is like a second. Well, time is relative, so I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, time is like, relative. So your boy. Didn't have the right settings on the camera. This is again, it's the first episode. It's the first time doing these outdoor episodes, and so I ain't had the right settings on the camera, and it got really, really, really dark. I mean, it got dark in real life, but the camera settings just make it made it darker. Um, I debated back and forth, but I decided I'll just keep it in there. Like it's still good for conversation. It doesn't look the best, but um, I'll give your boy some grace. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I could never like say it's true or not because i i just have to find my own truth i feel like everything is like within you know what i'm saying i don't think like i can't like claim i don't anything. know though i, I, I can't don't claim think... anything as right or wrong you know i just have to look for the answers myself i kind of got it wrong. but yeah. <laughs> the, the, he, he speaks from energy and all that yeah because I, I think i think what you said i get it mm-hmm. but i think it's dangerous what's dangerous having your own truth why you say that Cause Jesus said, "I am the way, I am the truth, yeah. I am the life." Yeah. Like Jesus is the truth, uh-huh. right? And so, when I decide to make my own truth, it gets scary because I'm the I determine what's real, basically. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, I'm a human being. We all are flawed. We all have sinful desires, and so at that point. I can't tell you that it's wrong for you to slap me (laughs) because that's your truth. That's what you think is the best thing. It's not wrong for you. If he decided to kill me right now, I couldn't be mad because I'm like, that's his his version of of truth. truth. He wanted to do that. And so, you know what I'm saying? And so that's why I think we have to have a standard that's above us Mm -hmm. or else it gets crazy. So why did the Bible, in the Bible, why did did it say that God created us like, like how he exists today? 
What you mean? Like, why do you create us like, like how we are, you know? Like, as humans and stuff like that. Like, in the universe, you know like, what I'm saying? That's, imperfect. The, that's the question you asked earlier. Yeah, I still like, don't that's, know. That's, that's, that's like, like, like that, like, that doesn't, like, that's like the one of, like, the biggest questions. Like, that's why I understand, like, why doesn't, like, the Bible say that? That's why I think the Bible is supposed to be symbolic. I really don't think God is, do you think God is a person? Or do you think it's, like, an energy? Um, or something else? Like when, I, when, I, when I say person, I mean, like, the, like the Bible says through the Trinity, he is one God yeah. that exists in three co-equal persons. So, you, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, so, yes, I, I believe he exists as, like, an actual being. Like being, yeah. So do you think like he's like a person? Like God is like within us, right? Like within mm -hmm. everybody. That's why I think like that's a metaphor. For, what do you like, mean, God is within us? Like God is with. Like isn't God supposed to be everywhere? Like, um, am I wrong? God is omnipresent. Yeah. Right. But um, I think you're getting into the idea of uh, pantheism. What is that? Pantheism is the idea that God is in everything. Is he not? No. Oh. He's outside of it. He oh, created right. everything. And everything comes from him, and everything was made through him, through through Jesus. But he's not in everything. Cause I I, I actually have an episode about that called um, "It's God the Universe," Word. and we talked about that. And at first, I was like, "Yeah, like God's in everything." Yeah. But through my study and everything, I realized like that's the idea of pantheism. That like God's in this great blade of grass, and he's in which uh, the Bible doesn't t tell that. Yeah. yeah. So I have a question for like everybody like who like also thinks like like the way we exist is like completely random. And then if they can't find the answers in the Bible, like why do you think they should believe in the Bible if they can't find the answers to, you know, because the way we exist, like even like, you know. Um, I think there's things about the human race, about just life yeah. that we'll never know mm -hmm. on this side of heaven. Right, like, I can't expect an infinite God to fit in my finite mind. You know what I'm saying? I only have the capacity to understand so much. So why do you think, like, he didn't help us understand those questions instead of, like, other questions? Because those are, like, the most, like, you know, basic questions to, like, just existence. The fun most fundamental questions to existence. It's a good question. I, th I don't know fully. Yeah. If I had to answer, I would say I think he gave us what he felt was enough for us to to live yeah like, does, um what he's kind of saying does that why he make us limited then yeah because ours would be god we would be our own we would be gods if, so if, why if, why does it have to only be one god and, and god is eternal right yeah so why is there only one god and you know like why do you make us like this why couldn't we be like something else you know sound like he doesn't want anyone to be like him yeah or the potential no. to be like him or whatever he, he's god he wouldn't be God if we was all God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then yeah, then yeah, I'm right. God, you God, we all He's God. He ain't God. The Alpha, so the what's Omega. The, God's purpose for us creating us was so that we can love each other and love him. Yeah. And so if we are our own gods, what reason would we have to love him? You're not. You're going to love yourself. So so, so I so I still don't understand, like, why can't everybody, like, understand, like, the universe? That doesn't answer the, like, answer the question, why can't everybody understand the universe? Why can't everybody understand the universe? Yeah. Man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even go, I'm not going to act like I know. Yeah, I, I, I don't you. know. I think at the end of the day. I'm not even going to try I think there's so that. many things you. that's like, God's like, you don't need to know that. Just just focus on me and I got you. Just trust in me. But like, I don't know what would we gain from knowing about the universe. I feel like that give more people more faith. I feel like if it was in the Bible, like why God uh, like created us like this, I feel like that give people more faith, and then more people go to heaven as a result. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I you're agree. saying like why did He make us as as men? Not not just as men. Like like you know what I'm saying. Like why does God make us exist as we do? Like the fact that we're humans and we're talking like that's so crazy. Like if you really think about it, like yeah. but it sounds normal to most people because it's the only existence we know. But it's really crazy. Like, why do we exist as this, and why do we why do we perceive existence like this, and not another way? I think I think we would ask ourselves that whatever. Like, if he made us as like aliens, right? Yeah. Some weird. I was gonna, but we are aliens. We'd be, like, yeah. we'd be like, why didn't he make us this way? Yeah. So I think, like, honestly, at the end, of, I think we're trying to, at the end of the day, find. We're trying to get the reasons for our existence and the reason for, but I think like. I think the Bible just tells us what we do 
um, like what our job is as believers, yeah. right? I and I'm sure it's in the scripture somewhere, but I don't I don't necessarily know why um, God created us the way He did. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I know why He created us, but I don't know why He created us but as if, humans. If it wasn't the Bible, do you think more people would believe in God? I don't. Yeah. Why? Because if it was because I think you would just find something there. else. Oh, you would, you would find you would, you would get that, and then you would be like, well, why didn't he give us this, or why didn't? So I I, I think honestly, it it would never the questions would never end. Well, if yeah. he just gave us the answers like universe, like is if if there's a like a, a, a like a specific reason he created us this way, he could like I feel like that would answer like the question why we were created this way, you know? And I feel like that would would that not like make more people believe in, or why he just don't show up right there and just have a conversation with us or and just talk about what he just answered what he just said you yeah. know let's stop him from doing something like that for the whole world because even like if he yeah. did put that if he did not putting that in like god is god is omniscient right so that means he knows everything that's going on like forever so sure. that would mean not putting that in he would know that that would send people to hell which is not very moral no i think again i think he still put the way he put in the scriptures the way to heaven right yeah he didn't say that you got to know everything. He said, put your faith in me and you'll make it to heaven. So do you think, so is the Bible, like the Bible, do you think that gave you faith? The Bible? You think that helped you like with your faith? I think reading the Bible, I think having my own experience yeah. and my own um, relationship with God, those three things have built my faith. Yeah. I, yeah. So that makes sense. I'm just saying like, if you put the answers in the Bible, do you think that will help people gain faith? The answer, do you mean like examples? I'm saying like the answer to why he created this way, like like the answer to my questions I just asked. I'm, and it may, there may be different opinions for it. I feel that if that were to be the case, yeah. an all perfect God wouldn't see a way for more people to be saved and not put it in there. Oh, I see. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't think, I, I don't think an all perfect God that is, like you said, is omnipresent is all powerful all knowing yeah. would know if i were to do this thing xyz and put it explain it this way that i could save seven billion seven million more souls yeah. if i just if i do this one small thing all i need to do is this and add it there and now these people are being saved i don't think he would just not do that yeah. i yeah. think he put exactly what was needed to be in there so that we as believers could do exactly what we're doing right now sure. that um, see that was the thing with that's one of my issues with christianity so why is it so vague yeah. like why is it what do you mean vague? like, like it's, it's kind of vague like it's a whole it's a whole it's, a whole, say. it's a whole bible yeah no yeah. no, he, no he's that's it i was like it's, gonna, it's kind of vague like yeah. we're saying it's vague <laughs> like it, there's a bible that explains christianity and you put your faith in god but the like you're just putting your faith in something like that you don't you can't comprehend and it's something like you know, like some like a human brain can't can't comprehend and like concepts like concepts of heaven and hell, concepts of eternity and infinity. Those are the concepts that the human brain can't wrap its like wrap its head around. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're putting your faith in something that you don't understand like fully. Uh, you and know, that's he, very vague. Kind of going, what he was saying he kind of you really want just straight up answers. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not saying I don't yeah. want straight up answers. I'm just I'm just asking these questions because like it helps me understand. Because for me personally, I don't understand like when I say vague, like why well, just don't be clear about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until a lot of people, that's not clear. That's what I mean by vague. So for it's sure. like for sure. Why not just? It, it just seems too vague for you. me. And I, Are you his father? Yeah, he's my yeah. dad. Yeah. So has he ever, as a kid, asked you any questions that you didn't? Give him the full answer. Why? All the time. Why can't Why can't I do this, Dad? You like because I said so, I said so. or because I'm not, I'll tell you later, or because you just don't have the capacity to understand why. I think in the same way, God's like I could I could answer everything for you, what would you get but him? at the end of the day, one you don't have the capacity to understand everything. Mm -hmm. Two, it won't be beneficial. And at the end of the day, just like you trust your father, yeah. you got to just trust God. Yeah, but that that's also going back <laughs> to the debate. I feel like this also like nurture. You believe in like nurture versus nature? Um, in what sense? Like, like nurture. I think it's a very what brief. do you think? So nurture, like do you believe in nurture trust nature or do you think it's like equal or do you think nature trust nurture? I think it's I think it's equal. So if nurture versus nature is equal, like that also doesn't make sense to me cuz 
that means like if I was born in like Al Capone's like position, I would group like Al Capone. You know, you think Al Capone going to heaven? Like, you know, if Al Capone was born in my position, I would group like him. Like, we could be swapped right now. Feel me? Right. I think. What you're saying is that certain people have a lesser or greater chance of yeah. accepting Christ. Yeah. That's a tough issue. I think that I think anybody that's been presented the gospel in any sense has the same uh you're the same accountability. But I feel like that that's not way cuz some people are presenting the gospel in like different ways, you know. For sure? Yeah. But I think I think and I think God accounts for that, right? I mm. think he judges fairly. I think if, if you were born in this <laughs> land that don't have a Bible and you yeah. never heard the gospel, I think when you die, he's gonna judge you according to your lack of knowledge. So then you go to heaven. I don't know. Oh. I, I can't answer yeah, that. I feel, I feel, but yeah. I think he judges according to your to your level of knowledge, right? Yeah, because I heard like if you like if like the only way you go to hell if you don't accept God, like but you know of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I, that still doesn't sound uh, very just. That's deep. I got a question. Yes, sir. So, you want to come to the mic? Uh, yeah, oh, I get the mic. Yeah. Hey, let me get the mic. I don't want to sit down, though, man. Well, I mean, you skateboarder, bro? You skateboard, skateboard Superman? Okay. So, this is deep. I like this, man. This is good. My son, you know, he, he you know, he be getting into some stuff. But um, as a father, I agree with you. When he was a little boy, um, I would just tell him things knowing that he he's not going to understand it but one day he would mm-hmm. and that's that's an interesting sort of parallel to kind of how god does that so I, I appreciate that that made me think about some things so do you think that like hold on my bad hold on son <laughs> my bad i'm not done so this concept of god this concept of christianity number one yeah so jesus didn't say he was a christian that was paul who came along and said we are we are Christians. Correct. Jesus just went around saving people, helping me. He, he had no church. He just was like, you know, he would go to the mountaintop. He would, you know, mm-hmm. he would go around, you know. And I think, this is my opinion, that we get wrapped up into those 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 words and those concepts instead yeah. of, like, I see people, I see Jesus and God and pe- kind people. Like, mm. I see it mm-hmm. in people. Mm-hmm. Like, it, like when I went to Africa, I seen it mm-hmm. in the village. Like, people who are kind that would give their food to anybody, give clothes off their back, yeah. but may not necessarily accept Jesus as... But I saw it in him. The, sure. the things that Jesus was talking about, yeah. all of the concepts, you know, uh, treat your others the way you want to be treated. And, Absolutely. you yeah. know... Yeah. And I was like, man, is this person not going to get into heaven because he doesn't accept, but he is living that life, giving everything. Like there's somebody in India right now who's on a mountaintop just saving people yeah. the way Jesus would, but they, they believe in Hinduism. They don't believe in, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? So like. And that's a tough, that's a tough issue to wrestle with. Do you know what I'm saying? Like with. that, yeah, because I'm like, yo, I see God and I think that's what God wants is he wants us to see him and other and, and everyone. If you see him, like if I go to church and I, I'll go to church with somebody for 20 years and they don't change their lives, I'm not seeing God in you. Correct. You understand what I'm saying? I'm looking, I think God wants us to 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 really learn his teachings and not necessarily get caught up on the words well, and I have the a question, concept. Though. Hold on. Yeah. Concepts. The principles. And, and, do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? But he 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 what he lays out is so crazy. And 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 it's like what did Method Man say? Basic instructions. Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth, hmm. right? So B I B L E. Mm-hmm. But if you li- just just read Matthew right. and you live your life and you don't know nothing else about Jesus, God, or anything else, yeah. you would be all right. You would be. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's crazy. Yeah. But, I'm sorry, that's all. No, that's a great that's a great point. Um, I'll write down. <laughs> <laughs> but you would be. But the thing is. I read this thing that said believing in Jesus and not accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior is the same thing as believing a parachute works or actually putting a parachute on. If you're on a plane and you believe a parachute works, that's cool, but you jump out of that plane, it's not going to save you. That makes complete sense, but that still doesn't justify like hell being a just place or a just possibility. So hell is the... Okay, so in that metaphor, right? Yeah. You in the airplane, you got a parachute. You like, I believe it, but you leave it and you jump out the plane. Hell is that option? Well, that's not that's not like a like a straight metaphor, cause 
like, I mean, it's not all metaphors <laughs> to a certain extent can be broken. That's not but, like a straight analogy, but that still doesn't justify like being a possibility. Like you're saying, it's not. It's not. You feel me? Like a possibility. Like even that. Even though it's a one percent chance that you can go to hell, that's still completely unjust. An infinite. I understand that you go to hell for like. It's a not just years. if I tell you. Yeah. If you don't put this parachute on, you will die. I. I, I <laughs> Once I told you that, you're accountable. It would yeah. be. It would be foolish for you to jump out of that plane. And not put it on. But do you believe a moral being would like allow that to be a possibility? I I do. I believe that a moral being, once giving you the option, once creating the way for you to come to him, he doesn't. He's not gonna force you to go to 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 him, right? Mm-hmm. But there does have to be an alternative. If if you haven't met the requirements to be with me in paradise, there has to be an alternative. We're not just gonna sit you in. A, I don't. You know what I'm saying? We can't just sit you in a. Dark Why can't he get like another him. chance or something like that? He had a lot. <laughs> yeah, because <that's, laughs> at what point would had you? A lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At what point would you actually come around? But why couldn't you get infinite chances if you're gonna go somewhere for, like it's rest of infinity? It's all audio right now, cause yeah. see y'all. <laughs> yeah. Can you see us a little bit? About the light, you fucking put yeah, the brightness bro, up. No, y'all don't have a light on the camera either. Just, Dang, I'm glad you said something. I'm gonna turn it up. It's all audio. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening and watching this episode of A Christian Podcast. I pray that you enjoyed it. If you got something from it, send it to a friend, share it with somebody, leave a comment if you're on YouTube, if you're on Apple, leave a rating and a review, whatever you got, leave a comment, rating, share it. Um, it really helps the podcast. And if you'd like to support the show, head to patreon.com forward slash Kevin Wilson or click one of the links in the description. Peace.